Well, breaking news out of Washington, D.C. History in the making. The House has voted to expel Republican Representative George Santos, a move that hasn't happened in more than 20 years. The freshman New York representative was voted out after allegedly misusing campaign funds. ABC's Liz Landers has more from Washington. Embattled Congressman George Santos removed from office following a third expulsion vote. In light of the expulsion of the gentleman from New York, Mr. Santos, the whole number of the House is now 434. The freshman New York representative removed after allegedly misusing campaign funds for personal expenditures. This fall, the Department of Justice brought 23 felony charges against Santos for alleged crimes like wire fraud and identity theft. Santos pleaded not guilty and continues to remind his colleagues there's been no conviction. I have been convicted of no crimes, Mr. Speaker. But a 50-page House Ethics Committee report released last month revealed even more damning details. Investigators claim he used campaign funds for his own personal enrichment, including rent, designer clothes, and Botox. On Thursday, allies and critics of Santos took to the House floor to debate his expulsion, with fellow New Yorkers like Rep. Mark Molinaro insisting Dear Santos God, must Mr. go. Speaker, he has manufactured his entire life to defraud the voters of his district. While others like Matt Gates of Florida expressing concern that a member of the House has never been expelled before criminal conviction. It is an incredibly dangerous thing for people in Washington, D.C., to substitute their judgment for the judgment of voters. Santos has become just the sixth member of Congress ever removed from the House. Santos's removal slims the Republican majority in the House now to just eight members. Santos had been representing New York's third congressional district, which represents parts of Long Island and Queens, meaning a Democrat could certainly flip that seat. In Washington, Liz Landers, ABC News. And stay connected with us as we learn more about this developing news out of Washington. Just download the WHAS 11 app for the latest push alerts. To use of official position of secure unwarranted privileges or advantages. Louisville Metro Councilman Anthony Piagettini is one step closer to being removed from his seat. Last night, his charges were formally presented to the council. It comes after the Ethics Commission found Piagentini guilty of ethics violations and using his position to leverage a job. It all stems from a $40 million American Rescue Plan grant that he co-sponsored for his future employer. Piagentini spoke against the charges. Once again, we see that this is a partisan process, void of any consideration of legal process, and I will not stand for it. I have no problem defending myself against alleged violations of the ethics code. I will not stand for this illegal and unprecedented action of criminal charges, addition of criminal charges, and I think this only continues to prove how biased and legally bankrupt the charging committee is. The next step is hearings before the council court where the case will be presented. Metro Council President Marcus Winkler expects that will happen early next year. As Republican Metro Council member Robin Engel makes the decision to do something different after serving District 22 for two decades, now GOP State Representative Kevin Bratcher says he wants to work for specific issues to make Louisville and Fern Creek the best places to live. WHAS 11 Taylor Woods and photojournalist Aspen Hester talked with the outgoing council member and with the state Republican lawmaker who wants that seat. It's been a great run and I'm looking forward to the future. After 20 years as council member of District 22, Republican Robin Engel is taking a step back, not running for re-election in 2024. He's an original Metro Council member elected after merger created the council in 2003. Engel says although the job is part-time, it's a full-time job devoted to the community. It's the job of fixing a pothole. It's not a Republican or a Democratic uh, issue. It's getting the job done for your constituents. He plans to finish his term working on construction of the Fern Creek Library and investing more into Metro Parks. In the meantime, Republican State Representative Kevin Bratcher says he's done with Frankfurt and his eye is on Engel's local council seat. The older I get, the more interested I'm in in local issues and uh, everything from MSD to planning and zoning to working with LMPD and the firefighters. 
Bratcher has worked in Frankfurt for 28 years, passing one of his most recent legislations to bring a youth detention center in downtown Louisville next year. He and State Representative Josie Raymond are now two state legislators going for Metro Council seats. I've worked with Josie in Frankfurt, and hopefully I'll be able to work with her in Louisville. And uh, I hope she'll be as nice to me as I was to her as the majority. But Bratcher feels moving to Metro Council, he can continue his work. And I think that It'll be a good fit for me, and I hope I can. I hope the people of Fern Creek allow me to continue working for them. Taylor Woods, WHAS 11, on your side. Chris Lewis, who works for Robin Angle, has filed to run for Bratcher's State House seat in District 29. Well, Thursday, the newly elected Metro Council members for November were sworn in for their new terms. Ben Reno Weber and Philip Baker were elected to full terms in November after the council appointed them to temporarily fill those seats earlier this year. Shamika Parrish Wright is also newly elected to serve the third district. And Mayor Craig Greenberg will not sign Louisville's recently passed anti-displacement ordinance, saying it will impact the city's ability to attract affordable housing. But it is still set to become law. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen has more on the message that Greenberg is sending and why Metro Council members disagree. Well, by not signing this ordinance, Mayor Craig Greenberg is essentially sending a message. That is, he does not believe this ordinance can accomplish its set out goals. It is still set to become law, but supporters and ordinance sponsors believe that Greenberg's actions send the wrong message. It's an ordinance the council unanimously passed two weeks ago. Vote! We need a vote! Vote! We to a roar of cheers from supporters. The anti-displacement ordinance is a first of its kind in Louisville. The goal, preventing homeowners from losing their financial footing when costs rise in their neighborhoods due to outside interest. The soon-to-be law will put developers through a thorough assessment if they want money or tax breaks or public land for Metro Louisville. It doesn't decide whether or not we participate, it's simply a data point. Researchers now have six months to develop a matrix tool, a timeline Mayor Craig Greenberg claims, quote, will certainly deter affordable housing builders. I think an unintended consequence is that there are delays and uncertainty in the process that's required to follow to build affordable housing of any type. Yeah, it's going to scare the developers who are trying to get our resources to build housing that most of us can't afford. Josh Poe with the Louisville Tenants Union, the group that championed the ordinance, says what Greenberg sees as delays, his organization sees as needed due diligence. And I think him not signing the ordinance makes it very clear what interest he represents in the city, and I hope the people of the city uh, will remember that. In Louisville, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11, on your side. And in his letter to Metro Council, Greenberg said even though he doesn't support the ordinance, he does support the intent behind it. And he told us he wants to work with council members on it. After three days, crews in court in Indiana have located where that water leak in their area was coming from. Late Thursday night, crews say they found it along Poolside Drive, a pipe that was nine feet deep and had a five foot split in it. And it turns out that water was going straight down into a cave. Service was restored to Settlers Trace. That was around one in the morning. A boil water advisory is still in effect until all bacteria tests are cleared. Metro police say it was a misunderstanding that led to a false report of an active shooter at GE's Appliance Park. It happened around 1130 yesterday morning. We told you about it here at noon. Police say a worker at the plant in Newburgh thought that they heard the GE active aggressor alarm sound. Well, that worker told a family member who then called police. Officers say no one was in danger and the 911 call was not made maliciously. Months after LMPD officer Brandon Haley was shot in the Chickasaw Park neighborhood, a grand jury has indicted a man for the shooting. Wednesday, Dominique Thompson was indicted for attempted murder of a police officer, assault on a police officer, wanton endangerment, and several drug charges. LMPD says Thompson fired the shots at Officer Haley on September 7th from inside a home near 38th and Kentucky. Body cam video shows Haley chasing two suspects and then being hit in the chest. Another officer can be seen dragging Haley from the line of fire. The grand jury also indicted Jaquan Ransom for possession of a gun by a felon and resisting arrest. Jamon Groves has been indicted on the same gun charge and trespassing. 
A man has been arrested for a July shooting in the Highlands that killed one person and injured two others. LMPD arrested 26 year old Frank Jones III for the shooting on Bardstown Road outside the Afro Conza Lounge. Now Jones is accused of shooting the three victims, including 31 year old Ricky Kemp, who police say died at the hospital. The incident prompted city leaders to adjust the Metro noise ordinance and take other actions to curb violence in the area. Jones is charged with murder and assault and is held on a $1 million bond. He'll be back in court December 11th. A man is dead after a shooting in the Algonquin neighborhood. It happened Thursday around 1:30 on 11th Street near Hill Street. When officers arrived, they found a man dead. There are no suspects at this time and the homicide unit is investigating. Now, if you have any information, you can help investigators by calling the anonymous tip line, that number 574-LMPD. Right now, Metro Police are searching for a murder suspect who they say is armed and dangerous. Take a look. This is Lamar Jones. Police say he's accused of shooting a man on August 15th of this year at 26 and Market. In addition to murder, he's also charged with possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. Now, if you see Jones, don't approach him. You are asked instead to call 911 or the tip line, again, 574-LMPD.